Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Industrial Development Corporation released its results this week, which showed some of the stresses in South Africa's real economy. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the issues raised. Hi Terence. Hi Simone. A big feature of the results was the rise in impairments. Was that to be expected? Well, I think it is somewhat the nature of the beast. The Industrial Development Corporation is supposed to take greater risk than the commercial banks. There's always a dispute as to whether they really do. But so they're taking early stage finance and there is greater risk. And they're also helping out companies in distress. So you can imagine some of those are going to fail. And we saw a, a big surge in impairment in, the, in terms of the nominal value to over 3.6 billion rand from over a billion rand in the previous year. But this has been a sort of a, a theme for the last five years. Since the, the global financial crisis, we've seen the impairments uh, on RDC's book growing uh, every year, or uh, nominal, uh, nominal values, but also as a ratio. It's now breached certain levels. At market value, it's over 16% uh, of, the, uh, of the book of about 42 billion rand that they lend out. So it's becoming a, a serious issue for, for the company. For the first time, I think uh, economic uh, development Minister Ibram Patel highlighted as a sustainability issue. He's been really pushing the RDC to do more during this difficult time, but he's saying, uh, you know, that has to be balanced with the viability and sustainability of the business. So I think uh, it was to be expected in some ways, but I think there's a concern that there's a lot of good money chasing bad deals, and I think that there will be a lot more work and effort going in over the next few years. In fact, the, the new CFO gave an indication that there are a number of actions that they're going to be taking, not only to reduce the ratio that is rising uh, of bad uh, of impairments, but also to deal with the actual, the nominal, uh, the real value, the number, because um, uh, it's rising quite, I mean, uh, it's getting close to four billion now. So it is serious. And, uh, you know, that's money that if it, that's never going to come back into the system that could be spent for developmental projects. Overall, the results were also under pressure, as you mentioned in your, um, in your intro. It really did show the stresses in the real economy. They lend into the space of manufacturing, agro-processing of chemicals, of metals, of mining, of commodities. So that's really the space that's under pressure. And we saw the, um, the, uh, uh, the profits coming down to 222 million from over a billion in the previous year. And, uh, you know, it's not, I think that actually was a better result than they were initially expecting it when they indicated in Parliament that the there could have been a loss during the year. So there, there was a sort of an improvement in the performance to what they were initially expecting. But I think it still shows that, the, that a lot of the sectors that they're involved with are under real stress and they're also taking some strain as a result. The development financier has indicated that it is sticking to its goal of dispersing 100 billion rand into the economy over five years. That's the, the audacious goal that they've been set. You know, they, dis they approved uh, this year, they approved 14.5 uh, billion, which is, is, is quite a good level. I think it's their record in terms of nominal uh, dis approvals. Disbursements always lag that. So disbursements is the actual money that was given into their client base was over just around 11 billion. So, so nowhere near really that record, 14 billion. I think it's not a record in terms of disbursements, but it's still a fairly, you know, a laudable performance given that they're having to play a role probably in, a in an environment where the opportunities are few and far between. So they, they were able to improve their approvals and the view is that they should continue on that path. That's, that's what the minister, that's what government wants, to play this counter-cyclical role uh, in providing finance to private I enterprise, but it's really the public sector playing, putting its money in its uh, pocket and giving it into private business to try and get things moving in the economy again. And uh, we, we're going, it's going to be interesting to see whether they can sustain and grow off the 14.5 billion approvals base. But I think the, the line to really watch is how much they're actually dispersing into the economy. Also being emphasized is the need to invest in job-rich investment. Yes, that's a big theme. And I think that was sort of the, the caveat. We've got this 100 billion rand target, but actually we want job-rich industrialization. So if we don't meet necessarily that rand figure, uh, at least we must improve our jobs performance. And that's why I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of emphasis, and they, they did say that at the results, on agro-processing type investments. It's seen as a 
a bit of a low hanging fruit in terms of jobs. Uh, the issue is that we've come out coming out of a drought period. We, we're not 100 percent sure what this year is going to look like in terms of rainfall and weather patterns. And that has a big determining factor on, on the sort of confidence in the sector and the ability to find deals. But there is going to be a big emphasis in that area, as there will be in shifting what they say from their legacy commodity heavy, heavy investment portfolio, which we can see is really under pressure. That, that uh, portfolio of listed investments, which includes companies like Kumba and Sassel, Sassel being a major part of that portfolio, and uh, South32, which was the old BHP Billiton, um, ArcelorMittal, that value of that portfolio has really shrunk. It peaked a couple of years ago at over 65 billion rand uh, that they were holding in terms of listed assets. Now it's come all the way down to below 40 billion rand. And then some of those companies are also not paying dividends. So in a context where you're wanting to meet a 100 billion rand dispersal target and you, you've got these listed investments that aren't paying dividends and they're harder to liquidate because their value is down, they're going to be having to look at other sources to finance that, so they're going to have to be going to the debt markets. Um, and that makes the announcement of uh, future growth uh, this week, that they're no, they're no longer wanting to invest in certain state-owned enterprises because of governance concerns, a, a real problem. Because if others follow suit, because IDC was one of the num uh, companies listed, it was along with Eskom, along with Transnet, Sanrol, we know SAA's problems on governance. IDC and the Development Bank of Southern Africa were also listed amongst groups that uh, future growth is not keen to invest in. So if those sources start to dry up and then you've got your legacy investments not performing and you've go, uh, you, you're going to battle to meet those targets. What we have seen is that on the, the subsidiaries, which are for uh, SCORE and FOSCOR, uh, those were a big drain in the year and there are actions being taken there to try and turn around those companies and hopefully not make them a drain on, on, the, uh, on, on the finances of the corporation. And in the case of SCORE, there's actually a, a program to do a, uh, to try and find a strategic equity partner. So in some ways, sell out of SCORE. Um, and that's gonna be interesting to watch because I think while there's interest in, in the parts of the business, whether there's interest in the whole of the business is, is still up for, uh, you know, we're gonna have to see whether that really materializes. And uh, it's, uh, I think over the next few months, we'll see how, what sort of action um, RDC is going to take around th that steel business. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.